Uh, we got Pat Murphy on the line from Bucknuts 247 Sports to talk Ohio State Northwestern Big Ten Championship coming up. Um, and the Wildcats, an unlikely uh, second time in three years as a Buckeye matchup in the Big Ten Championship game. Usually there's a gap between the conference championship game and national signing day, even with this uh, reprisal of the system in this early signing period here now over three years. Uh, but it all smashes together in one week, which I'm sure adds to the difficulty in some regards. The pandemic has added to it, uh, something that Ryan Dre Day uh, addressed. Yeah, it's been a, a crazy year for, for everyone when you go to the recruiting side of things. And you know, obviously a crazy year on, on a lot of sides. But uh, you know, for, for people who don't follow it as closely, there haven't been the the chances for official visits or or any of the normal things, um, you know, visiting kids at school, visiting kids in their homes, those type of things since the spring when when the pandemic started and, and the NCAA kind of shut those things down and, and they've continued to push back and push back um, dates when when coaches would be able to go out on the road and kids would be able to take official visits. Um, and that's affected everybody. Uh, this isn't just an Ohio State problem, but with it being close to, to the start of the early signing period, Ryan Day did address this this week. And, and just that, you know, in a normal year, you know, obviously the Big Ten championship game would be over. They'd be preparing for um, either a bowl game or a college football playoff appearance. And coaches would be out on the road right now, you know, trying to get those those last minute guys, maybe a flip here or there. Now it's all done via Zoom and, and things like that. So FaceTime and whatnot. So fortunately, these coaches have gotten pretty good at that because that's how all of these, um, how they've built a lot of these relationships, I guess I should say. There were some kids that obviously were able to visit before uh, the pandemic began and, and everything shut down. But a lot of these guys have never taken an official visit to Ohio State or, or any school. Um, they've never you know, been to an Ohio State game in person maybe some of them haven't even met these coaches in person, which, which is just crazy to think about given the relationships and, and how you cultivate those during the recruiting process normally. Um, despite all that, Ohio State still has the number two recruiting class in the country and, and a chance at, at the number one recruiting class when things are all said and done with a few more guys out there. So, you know, it, it's, it's really impressive that they've been able to, to not only maintain a talented class that they had back in the spring, but add a number of guys to it, um, continuing to build credit goes to the coaches, but also to these recruits who have done a really good job on their own of continuing to forge relationships with each other um, and, and, you know, kind of spreading the word of Ohio State, for lack of a better term, um, and getting some guys to commit that, that maybe, you know, if, if this class isn't as, uh, as focused on recruiting themselves, doesn't, don't end up at Ohio State. So um, it'll be a, a big day. It'll be a different day. Um, for Ohio State on Wednesday when guys can first start sending in their their um, faxes because that's still a thing in recruiting and uh, with the, their letters of intent. But, uh, you know, Ohio State will be happy um, to get this class wrapped up. Ryan Day also talked about just the kind of people that, that these guys are, and, and he'll speak more of it about it, more about them on Wednesday when he can, you know, address guys by name and things like that. But uh, rest assured, Ohio State's very happy with what they've been able to do and the class that they're going to uh, land here. I've got to think that whoever um, eliminates the facts portion of this is going to become a legend in college football history uh, yeah. whenever that's going to take place. I, I would have thought that that would have happened like in 1994. Right. Regardless, it's Ohio State recruiting, and it's National Signing Day coming up on Tuesday. And as Pat references, Ohio State's got the number two class uh, currently, according to 247 Sports and across the board. Uh I'm going to bring up one negative, one positive to the way Ohio State would have to approach recruiting during this particular year. The the one negative I would think would be it's a national program. Therefore, they're not just recruiting in state or even in the region, but they're going to Florida, to Texas, and sometimes to California in particular, and then all the other states connected. Uh, Georgia and the like to get recruits. And in this, with all the obstacles that you just pointed out, to draw kids out of those regions without the visit, without the face-to-face, -face, I would think would be a huge challenge. On the other hand, the national brand, the record, just the name itself, I would think would help when other programs and institutions rely on 
more selling the relationship, selling the school, selling other things involve the intangibles as opposed to Ohio State just saying, hey, look at our record. Yeah, I think you're spot on. I mean, you know, the the name Ohio State, having that block O on your jacket, we've heard it from coaches in the past. That certainly gets you in more doors than than if you're at a lot of other schools. Um, and, and in this case, it gets you in more Zoom ro- chat rooms, I guess. Um, but, you know, then, then there's, you know, still the – the, the, the competing with those other schools that are on that same level, the Alabamas, the Clemsons, the, the Oklahomas, um, USC out in California, th- those programs. So that's where you then have to, to build that relationship um, and, you know, kind of cultivate things. Um, and it's just had to be done a different way this, this time around. I think what has helped is that these kids are so in tune with the technology that, you know, they, they are used to, that's how they talk to friends, talk to other recruits, things like that. So to them, maybe it's not so foreign to, you know, maybe have never met assistant coach Brian Hartline, for instance, in person and, and only talked with him on FaceTime. Um, you know, things like that are, are, may seem strange to coaches who do it every year and kind of have a process. But these kids that, that maybe haven't, didn't get a chance to really start taking their visits and go through the process are used to, to communicating that way. So I think in some ways that works out for a place like Ohio State. Um, but yeah, I, I think everyone will be happy when, whenever it is, we can go back to, to the, the, the normal recruiting process and you know everything that comes along with that, which includes fans in the stands and traveling and, and whatnot. And certainly it can't be replaced, the face-to-face uh, relationship that can be built. But at the same time, I got to think that maybe the approach might be slightly adjusted in the future where you can maximize resources and time by having the Zoom call and maintaining contact with some of those recruits that actually are, like you say, that's the way they grew up. They're comfortable with it. They're fine. It makes no difference to them. 